we want our fountain object to emit a looping sound effect that the game's listener will pick up in 3D space. So we need to create an emitter and then play its audio through that. However, the fountain is a child of the OBJ par environment parent object. So it makes more sense just to add this functionality to the parent. That way, any object that we attach to it uh, can also use it, whether now or in the future. So make sure OBJ par environment uh, is open. You can get it from your asset browser. And let's do two things. First, let's click on the variable definitions button and bring up that familiar panel. And we're going to add a few definitions here. You can click the add button and let's call this first one, use sound. Now where it says type, let's click on the uh, drop-down menu and choose asset. And where it says uh, under options, there's a little gear icon that says open options. We can specify what kind of asset we want this variable to be able to access. By default, they can select everything or we can specify and say only sounds. And if you just click on sounds there, you'll see it's highlighted and that's how you know. Next, where it says default, let's click on this little um, drop down here and choose none. We'll change that in each case we want to use it. We have two more variable definitions to add, so let's click add again and call this one fall start. And let's set it to, uh, let's say 500. And keeping it at real is totally fine. Let's click the add button to add one more, and we'll call this one max dist for max distance. And we'll put this one at 4,000. And again, leaving it at real is totally fine. These are going to allow us to determine what sound an environmental object can play, uh, when the sound for this will start fading off as you get further away from it, and then from how far you can still hear it. We'll get to this part in the next step, but just make sure these are set up like this and you're good to go. Let's add a new event to our environmental parent object so we can use these new variable definitions. Click Add Event and choose Create. And let's access the code for this. You can add a description. And I'm going to paste in a rather large block of code and then I'll explain it. So we are adding an emitter variable, which is just something we're making up calling my emitter and we're just calling it zero. Now we are also uh, creating a if statement here that says if you sound does not equal none. Now remember, we just defined that you sound here in these variable definitions and we said by default it is uh, no one. But if that's not the case, meaning if we change that somewhere down the line, and if that sound is not already playing, we've seen this before, we use this with um, the uh, player object, we're going to do a few things. We're going to create an audio emitter. And remember, we have a function on the right side of an equal sign, which means we are running a function and storing its result in this variable. And then we are using this variable, which now knows what our emitter is called, and we are uh, applying a few effects to it. So we are setting its position, which is the position of the current environmental object. We are setting its falloff model, which is just a fancy way to say, how do we want the audio to fade out as you get away? There are uh, several ways to do this, and you can read up on all the different versions of this in the manual, but we're just choosing a basic one. Um, and then we are setting how this falloff works. So we're saying on this emitter, which is for our environmental object, uh, start um, fading out the audio at false start, which is that variable definition that we set here, which would be 500 pixels away. And then keep going until max dist, which we set here as 4,000 pixels. So basically, if the player gets 500 pixels away from our fountain or whatever other object, the audio will start fading out. And once the player is four, uh, more than 4,000 pixels away, they shouldn't be able to hear it. If you change these values, of course, that situation will change. And finally, the way you play sound on an emitter is you literally play it on it. So it's not just saying audio play sound. You have to say audio play sound on, and you have to choose an emitter 
specify the sound and you get the loops and priority uh, situation as before. So we're basically just doing all of this right here, creating an emitter, uh, or sorry, checking to see if we have a sound uh, attached. If so, making sure it's not playing, creating an emitter, setting that emitter's position, uh, setting the fall off model, which is just how the sound fades out. And then once all that's done, play the sound on this emitter. Setting up an audio emitter in our environmental uh, parent object may seem like a lot with this you know, large chunk of code right here. And we have these three variable definitions, but because of this, we can now do a whole lot very easily with all of our other objects. So we just need to do two things. First, in order for an audio asset to work with 3D positional audio with emitters, it needs to have a setting changed. So in your asset browser, open up the sound underscore fountain. And in the output, make sure that's set to 3D. Next, let's open up our actual fountain object from the asset browser. And let's click on variable definitions in the object editor. Now we can see these gray options that were inherited from the parent object, use sound, false start, max dist. We're not going to worry about these two, but we do want to change use sound, because if we don't uh, change this to have a sound, we're not going to get that cool looping sound effect that we want. So you can click on the pencil icon to override that. And instead of no one, you can click here to choose a sound asset. And let's choose sound fountain. And that's it. Let's run our game again and see what happens. Now you can hear the fountain right away. And if I move around the town, you can hear its position change. So it's much quieter when I'm up here on the top left, but you can also hear it as if it's coming from the lower right. And of course, you can track its position down here and all the way even down here. So we could technically add an emitter to any other object we wanted in our room. We could make the trees make sounds, we could make the NPCs emit sounds, and our player would track them all in 3D space. When you're done here, you can go ahead and close the window and return to Game Maker Studio 2.